Hi guys, welcome to this session in Microsoft Project. In this module, I want to show you several different ways of tracking a project. So on the screen, I've got a simple project where I have already saved a baseline. So a baseline is already saved. Now that is quite crucial if you're going to use project properly, that you save a baseline. To do that, if I go to the project tab, I just basically went in there, set baseline. Now, you only do that once you've got all your tasks sorted out, they are linked, they are resourced, you're ready to go with your project, then you set a baseline. Now, the one I've set already is in this list, and you can see it there. Just cancel it off. You've got, before I cancel it off, you've got all these different options. If you want more than one baseline, you can have that. I'll just cancel that off. So I've saved a baseline. Now, to update your tasks or track your tasks how you're doing you've got a few different options if i go back to the first tab tasks on here you have these features where you can click on a task and click how far that task is done you'll get a little marker on the actual gantt chart showing what you're doing so if i go to a full fully complete you can see how that is being filled in now i'm just going to put that back to zero You've also got this option. So whichever task you're on, you've got the option to mark on track or go in there, update the task. You can then say that this is a certain percentage complete and you can fill in any of this information, the actual start date, if you so wish, as opposed to the baseline start date. You can change that. So if I put that there and then click OK, that has now caused a bit of an impact on the Gantt chart. So I'm just going to undo that. Control Z. So there's quite useful, quick ways of doing a project update. However, it's not very accurate. What I tend to do is I change the view to the tracking Gantt view. And in the tracking Gantt view, I have inserted these three columns, which tell me what the baseline date start date finish date and duration was now this is also not the normal table that you would see by default so i've gone to from entry which is that to tracking which is what you was looking at initially because i think this is a bit of a more accurate way of updating things also you get the tracking gantt there so you can see the movement of the first baseline that i've already done so the way i would look at this is You've got actual duration there. Now, an actual duration is more accurate in my mind than doing 100% complete. Because if you are going to a task and you're saying it's 100% complete, you're basically saying that whatever you planned actually happened. So for example, I planned this task to be one day. If I do 100% complete, that means it was one day. That's one, 100% complete. It was one day. What you should do is put the actual duration. So if I say, it was planned for one day, but actually it took two days. That is a more accurate way of doing it. And it's done 100% for me, but now you can see the difference. It's moved off there. And if this, if this was more than two days, and I still have another day left, I can do that. Now, it's not 100% complete because it's still got a, a remaining duration of one day. Now, this task is set also for one day, but let's say I did that in half a day. So if I go 0.5, that's not going to go 100% complete because it's assuming it's 50% complete. But if I then change the remaining duration to zero, that will then do 100% complete and that will indicate the task has gone half a day early. So that's a good thing. That's how you, that's how you uh, display tasks that have finished early. Obviously, tasks that finished late are reflected by what we've just been doing up here, these two. Now, you can also... That's using the actual duration. You can also use these start dates. If I go into this one, so that was due to start on Monday. Obviously, it's slipped. So if I'm going to say it starts on the 7th, that's knocked all that over there. Everything has moved because it's all linked. Now, none of this is complete, but I could say this was one day in duration. So it was actually as planned, but the start date was wrong. You could also utilize the finish date. So this was due to finish on the 29th, but it must be following that. 
So if I say it finished on the 8th, again, it puts the 100% complete in and puts all the dates in there. And the duration is as was planned. So this, I think, using the tracking Gantt view and the tracking table, I've inserted these columns so you can see what your plan was. Now, you might have to insert start one, start two, etc. If you've saved more than one baseline. I think this is a more accurate way of doing it. A bit more time consuming, I agree, but more accurate. So those are just a few of the features where you can go which is straight from the Gantt chart view or tracking Gantt view in this case in the table. So you can also update things from resource usage or task usage view, these down here. So on task usage, you know, I've got like eight hours there. I could, I could say actual was four hours. And then that task on it is only got 12 hours work on it and stuff like that. So this is you manually update, updating it. Now I've changed the wrong thing there. We're getting ahead of myself because I needed to insert the actual column. So I've not done that. I'll insert actual work. So actual work is down as eight hours for that particular task. But if I put four, four hours, I've saved myself a bit of time there on that task. Four hours was actual work. So that's another place that you can change the actual times that the task took. So same principle would apply if you had resource usage on here, going back to the Gantt chart at the top there. So that's all I want to talk about on this little video, how we can use the tracking Gantt and tracking table to update and track and monitor your progress in a project. So hopefully this little videos have been of use. Thank you for your time. I'll catch you in the next one.